Lord, to tonight's Bible study. I give honor again to God. I give honor to his son, Jesus. I give honor to the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. I give honor tonight to Bishop Joseph White, the founding presiding bishop. I give honor tonight to the board of directors. Some of you all will meet the other bishops as you travel. Sometimes they're going to come here. Somebody say they're going to come here. They're going to come here. Bishop White's going to come here sometimes. And, and Bishop Johnson is going to come here. And Bishop Richardson and Bishop Edwards and Bishop Lee. I believe in Bishop Lee going to come all the way from Europe and come here. Because God can do it. And Bishop Butler and anybody else that he wants to see. And so I give honor to all of them, the board of directors tonight. I give honor to Elder Walter Jones, our district superintendent, Assistant Pastor Harris, all ministers, saints, and friends tonight. And tonight... The topic is put on righteousness and true holiness. Put on righteousness and true holiness. And we've been talking about putting off the old man for the last couple of weeks. That's in our Christian education outline. So the Spirit is having us transition to not just focus on what we need to put off, but what we need to put on. So tonight is put on righteousness and true holiness. And if you can turn with me to Ephesians 4. And 15. That's going to be a quick reading of 4 and 15 because that's just the background from where we left off last before we move on over to Proverbs tonight. So Ephesians 4 and 15. When you get there, please say amen. Again, the topic is put on righteousness and true holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for this Christian education outline. And it's to help us make our calling and election sure. And it's to help us to be renewed in our mind and, and so forth and so on. So Ephesians 4 and 15 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And that's all we do in the Church of the God in the National. By the Holy Ghost, it's to speak the truth in love so that we all can grow up in Christ. And it said in all things. And so we can't pick and choose, okay, I want Christ in this one thing, and I'll speak the truth in this thing. But even if it's something that I'm afraid to speak about, because sometimes you can be afraid to speak something about the Lord because you don't want to lose family members, friends, co-workers, investments, all these things. But we have to push through to just speak the truth in love, that we would all grow up in Christ. So it says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working, in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body, and this body is the church, unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. It says being alienated from the life of God. And the Spirit would, would remind me as he did tonight of when I was in the world. And it was me walking past the church saying all those horrible things. And he told me one day, he said, well, when I was doing that, they were still having general assemblies. When I was doing that, somebody was preaching and teaching the truth. When I was far from God, they were still traveling around the world. And so he showed me, he said, I was just alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that was in me because of the blindness of my heart. And it wasn't until I started to believe that for myself that that was really me that I was able to turn that over to the Lord. Because I, my whole life, people said, well, you're such a nice young man. It was, people always had nice things to say about me. And my deliverance didn't truly come until I emptied myself out and began to see myself as God saw me. And I began to pray as he saw me. And I began to tell God all the nice things people said about me on the job and my grandmother said about me and my aunt that loves me. So I was still ignorant of God's life and I was still alienated from it. So when I began to see myself as God sees me at that time or saw me, then I was able to go free. And that's why we, we study and we learn so we can really see where we are in God and then say, you know what, Lord, 
this is me, whether it's good or bad. If it's good, glory to God. Take that to God and say, Lord, thank you for bringing me this far. Lord, increase my faith even the more and take me even further. If, it, if it's you and one of the, the bad things, Lord, thank you for grace and help me hear this tonight. Lord, change me. So that was me. And then it says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. Me as well wanted everything in life, all these different things. Gave myself over. I was past feeling. I could say all kinds of manner of things. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. And on Sunday, doing Christian education, we talked about how the Bible says that should we try to go and get Christ from heaven and bring him down to the earth? Or should we try to go into the deep and raise him from the dead again as if we have to go find him for him to teach us directly? And then the Bible said the word is nigh you. That means it's close to us. So you don't have to go and find Christ. You don't have to go in a sabbatical in the jungle and all this stuff to try to find the Lord. The word is already here. And so now we're being taught by Jesus without Jesus actually being here. And so it says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And this is in all things, because we started out said that we may grow up in Christ in all things. So this renewing of the spirit of the mind, it is as much as we yield to the renewing. God doesn't force the renewing. We have to yield in every aspect of our heart, our mind, and our body. Some parts of us is easy to yield. You may not struggle with the same thing your brother or your sister struggled with. So maybe it was easy for you to stop lying. But maybe for them, they have gotten this far in life and have the things they have because they have been a good liar. Some people are expert liars. There's people today, politicians, that make it to the Senate and have lied their way through, never went to school, never went to this, and then they're just now getting caught. They're like, you don't even deserve to be here because we found out you lied your way. You didn't have those credentials. You didn't go, but they're expert liars. And so maybe in that part, it's hard to let that go. Because that's an advantage. But the Bible says that God daily loaded us with benefits. And that we should take the advantages that God gives us so we don't have to lie anymore. And that's why I said, let him that steal, steal no more. Because it's no longer us supplying our own need, but it's God supplying our own needs. So, so we have to yield in every part. And sometimes some parts you don't know you have to yield until you know you have to yield, which means you can be perfectly fine for 30 years. And then it's that one sermon or that one situation that comes up and you're like, I did not even know I needed God to take that from me. I did not know I needed to be changed in that area. And so with this, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind is in everything, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And that's the topic tonight. Put on righteousness and true holiness. So we have our commandment for the Lord, which is put off the old man, put on the new man, and this new man is created in righteousness and holiness, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. So if you can turn with me tonight, somebody say tonight. And I'm glad to say tonight because we are in the house of God tonight. And so if you can turn with me to Proverbs 23, this is in the Old Testament. So we're going backwards in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 23, and round about the sixth verse, 23 and 6. And this scripture is actually on our outline as well. So without me pulling out the outline, I'm just going through the scriptures that are on the outline. So I'm teaching from the Christian education outline. Proverbs 23 and 6. So on the Christian education outline, and you don't have to pull it out, but if you had it out, it's number 4, letter A. And it says, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as a man Thinketh in his heart, so is he. And this is the basis of the rest of the Bible study. Because we're talking about putting on righteousness and true holiness. So, so the heading for this point on is, So as a man thinketh in his heart, 
so is he. And so it says in verse 6, 23 and 6, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. We're going to break down two parts. There are two main parts in this scripture in verse 6. So in verse 6, the first one is evil eye. I'm going to read 6 again. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. So hold your place in Proverbs 23, and we're going to turn to Matthew 6 and 22 and touch on this evil eye. Matthew 6 and 22, going back to the New Testament. Chapter 6 and 22. When you get there, please say amen. Matthew 6 and 22. And this is Jesus speaking. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for he either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or you can't serve God and Satan. So Jesus has, without a shadow of a doubt, let us know that if your eye has darkness, the things you see, the things you think on, sin is in you somehow, even if it's just a little bit, your whole body is going to be full of darkness. Or if it's light, the things of God, starting out with just a little bit, then your whole body will be full of light. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He drives out darkness and he puts in the light. And that's why we grow up into him in all things. So picture the body. Maybe he's touched your mind, he's worked on your heart, and then my arms is full of all my other emotions and I haven't let him get there yet. So shoulder on down, I'm still full of darkness. But glory be to God, he's worked his way down there. i got to allow him to work on the rest of me. So in keeping this in mind that Jesus has declared that this is exactly true, Jesus himself said it, that if your eye be evil or dark, your body shall be full of darkness. So if we go back to Proverbs 23 and 7. I'll read it while you're turning back. So it said, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats, or neither desire the things that he has. So a person that, that, that is evil, that don't mean they're not nice. That don't mean they don't have a kind word. That doesn't mean they don't invite you to their house. But on the inside, they don't have the Holy Spirit. They're not trying to live for God. That little bit of darkness means their whole body's evil. And when that happens, they can be nice for a while, but given the right circumstance, that evil comes out. Whether it's evil that's not against you, they're just cursing, they're just drinking, they're just doing whatever, or they actually turn on you, and then the evil spirits really tear you up. Because their eye is dark. So their whole body is full of light. So their kindness only goes, their whole body is full of darkness. So their kindness only goes so far. So sometimes in the world, my um, mother, my mom's friends say, well, I've had it up to here. She said all the time. That was when she got to where I done had enough, and now I'm about to cuss you out. So she was nice up until that point. And it was because her body was full of darkness. We only saw the nice level on the surface. So this said, don't even desire the things that they have. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So in the heart, the evil will be in there. But on the surface, they have kind words. And it says, eat and drink, he saith to thee. So it says nice thing and treat you and so forth. But his heart is not with thee. And is with thee, the only way a person's heart is not with thee is if you are no longer like them. So when I was in sin, 
I was just like everybody else that was in sin. And my heart was with them, and that's why we were in sin together. But the moment that I was no longer like them, and as we all are tonight, growing in the Lord, trying to grow up in him, then it becomes where a person's heart can no longer be with you. And it can be the person that used to be with you because y'all had the same heart. And they can be with you up until a point. Wherever that point may be, maybe they're with you 99% of the way. It's filled all the way down to their feet. And every, every point, every checkpoint, they can go with you on everything. Go with you all the way down. You get right down to the bottom of it. And they're like, no, I can't go with you on that. That's what this is saying here. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to me. But his heart is not with thee. So we're going to hold our place there. Now we're going to talk about our heart. Because we just talked about the evil eye. So the second part is referring to the heart. So if you turn with me to Matthew, going back to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 6. Because the Spirit wants us to put on righteousness and true holiness. And that comes from the heart comes from the heart. And this heart isn't this physical heart that's in our body that's pumping blood. It's actually your mind. And that's why you have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The Bible doesn't say be renewed in your heart. It's renewed in the spirit of your mind. So over in Matthew 6 and 19, when you get there, please say amen. Amen. Talking about this heart tonight. And I'm so thankful that God worked on my heart one day. Because when I was walking and talking and saying those, those evil things, I was still kind and nice and everybody loved me. I mean, since Pastor Harris can tell y'all, when me and her met, I had so many friends, male and female. And she could not believe I was single. Because everywhere we went, somebody was happy to see me. At the drive through they all leaning out the drive through Hey, Demetrius, how you doing? She could not believe. She thought I was lying because everywhere we went, not only were there a bunch of guys, but there were a bunch of girls always walking around me, talking to me, calling my name and things because I was such a nice person. But on the inside, it was darkness. It was evil. It was all these things that Jesus told us about. And so I'm thankful because I was taught this one day and then I knew what to pray. Then I had the right understanding. I was like, Lord, that's why the Bible says if, if you think that you're something that you're not, I thought I was something. In God's eyes, I was nothing. But now I'm something in God's eyes, and I'm glad about it. So over in Matthew chapter 6, and God has the same thing for all of us. He has the same thing. He wants to change us and make us acceptable. So over in Matthew 6 and 19, talking about the heart, the Bible says, not just the Bible, Jesus says. It's in red again. This is Jesus teaching us. Again, it said, if you have been taught by Jesus, don't got to go find him. He's teaching us right now. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. I'm going to stop there really quick. One of my treasures was my car. I've told the testimony partly. Good old 1992 Honda Accord had a spoiler, had a sunroof. Oh, I was hot stuff. I was nice and had a nice car. Oh, it was, oh, I thought I was something. Met a sister, Pastor Harris, round, round about Thanksgiving came up, had a fender bender, could, couldn't care less who she was. I ain't want no Thanksgiving. I ain't want to see her. I ain't want me and her family. Just ooh, me and my car with my fender bender. Car ain't even told her. Just a little Honda sign and a little gorilla. And it just took them too long to fix it. I was so down and out about it, you would have thought, you would have thought I had lost my best friend, my best dog, everything is just, just destroyed. It was the most important thing to me in my life. I worked hard for that car. I worked hard for that image to build that up. It's the cool guy. After being called big nerd and stuff in school, Kirk Fordyce, we there was a governor. And his name was Kirk Fordyce. And they used to talk about me, so I was Kirk Four Eyes. Talked about, I had these big rearview mirror glasses. Just So I worked hard. I worked hard for that image. And that's why I said earlier, some people, you don't know what they need deliverance from. So maybe another person lied their way through. I worked hard to turn my image around. 
I, w I grew up braids. I had the biggest afro in school. The superintendent said, Fro, my nickname was Fro. Fro, what you know? I worked hard for that image. So by the time she came around, I done worked hard. I got my car. I got all this stuff. I got all these friends. I got, I got everything I could possibly want in life. Not knowing I was evil and alienated from the life of God. So it says that where moth and rust doth corrupt, that car is somewhere probably corrupted, broke down, don't even run anymore, but it was my all in all. So Jesus went on, he said, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Nobody can steal your treasures in heaven. They don't get old. They don't rust. They don't get corrupted. You don't have to buy one every year. Like I want a new phone. I just got, I got like five phones. I'm like, I want that new one. The one with all the megapixels. But in heaven, it's always good enough. It's always better. Jesus said, don't lay up your treasures for stuff down here, but lay your treasures in heaven. Why? In 21, Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I didn't know that scripture back then in 2005. That treasure was my car, and my heart was all in. And it was the most important thing to me. And I did not care about nothing or nobody else. The Bible says Jesus knew no sin. Which simply means he is not lying when he just taught us this. Jesus just taught us this tonight. It don't matter if you heard it before. It don't matter if you read it before. Jesus is teaching again tonight. This Bible study is brought to you by Jesus Christ. You know, when you watch the show, they have snow. It's been brought to you by, this is brought to you by Jesus Christ tonight. He said, for where your treasure is... There will your heart be also. There will your heart be also. Where is your heart tonight? What do you love the most tonight? Who do you love the most tonight? So I get married to Assistant Pastor Harris. I didn't have a Holy Ghost for three, almost three whole years. So the beginning of our marriage, 2006, 2009, I did not have the Holy Ghost. So what was going on with Brother Harrison at that time? My heart was jumping around to different things that were so important to me. I already talked about the world and music my heart was in. I talked about my car. We bought an Audi right before we moved from Mississippi. Audi was my dream car. I had driven them on PlayStation, Gran Turismo. I was like, I'm getting an Audi. Finally got an Audi. So move with it. I was like, yes. Got my Audi. Got my wife. I got two girls. I always wanted kids. Had two wonderful daughters. My heart jumped around. Then the, the daughters became my all in all. So in that three years, my heart was jumping from thing to thing. And what it was, the spirit was taking away different things and I was not ready to let go. So when he would take away one, I would replace it with another. He took away the world of music. I replaced it with the car. We moved down there. <laughs> we moved to Atlanta. Got that house. One of the first things I did was drive that car to the wall. And <laughs> she back there laughing. Pulled in the, in, the, in the garage and drove right into the wall. <laughs> Just moved there. Car was out of commission. Car was gone. All, the, the Audi was Audi. It was out of there. I was like, good Lord. What is going on? The spirit was like, because your heart was in it. So we were without a car. The neighbor we didn't know was kind enough to let us drive his work truck. So it was something I would never love. It was like a big Ford F-150 with a big metal thing in the back. It looked like it had been beat up, blown up. It got us to work, but there was no love in that for me. And I was just thankful to have a vehicle. So the spirit was like, ha, I got you. Because he knew my heart was in that. So I was like, okay, well, worldly music out. Love with the car out. What's next? Oh, I love the girls. Love those daughters. I'm up. They're going to be the sons that I never had. Train them up. I was training them up in games. And I'm just telling y'all how to put on this righteousness. So I'm going to take just a little bit of time. I was training them up. The youngest daughter, she was always the princess and everything. I was going to make her tough. We started playing a game, a little shooting game. She was getting headshots and, 
and all kinds of stuff. She, she was so good at training up, she was able to ride an ATV and get a headshot. I called the sister, Pastor Harris, there one day. I said, look at this babe. Isn't this so great? She's like, good God, what are you doing? What are you teaching my girls? I'm like, this is wonderful. Not, not many days hence, the, the Spirit had me throw away all that, all my games and everything. He tried me. And I didn't play another game for like eight years. Am I saying that's what he said you do? That's not what I'm saying. That's what he told me to do because my heart jumped from one thing to the other. And I, didn't, I missed the whole generation of Xbox 360 with PS3. I never owned one, never played one. So that's like 10 years. And then one day the Spirit said, that's not in your heart anymore. Now you can go buy one. And at my house now, there's an Xbox something, the newest one, and I barely ever play it. And then we got another Xbox in the basement, barely ever play it. And I got all these games. I got a subscription service. Don't even have to buy anything. Barely play anything because it's not in my heart anymore. So I'm going to continue in the Word. That's what the Spirit wants to do to everybody. So if you try to be like me, okay, well, you're going to take one thing. I'm going to love another. He's just going to take that too because you've been chosen. So the Spirit will find you. He'll go down your arm, down your hand, down your back, down your feet, say, I still got it because you've been chosen. So I'm going to help you. So I thank God for that tonight. And so he said in 21 again, for where your heart, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So we turn right back to Proverbs 23. In seven, I'll read that as you're turning. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. In verse eight is the result of this, and this is why we have to let the spirit change his heart. It says, the morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. The things in our heart that's not the treasures of God, at some point in our life, is going to come out. And if it's evil, at some point, it will come out. No matter how nice we think we are, no matter how long we hold on, if we don't become full of light, if there is something someone can say to you, or do to you, or you have to experience that will cause that evil to rise up and come out, and you will lose thy Sweet words. You'll lose your kindness. You'll lose the ground you gain in God. You'll lose the reputation that you have in God. You'll even lose the things of God. And that's how people end up backsliding or leaving God. They did not allow the Spirit to take whatever that was. They held it in their heart. Then an opportunity came up. A situation came up. The devil got in because they gave place and room to him. And then that thing came up. That thing came out, that emotion, that feeling, that desire, that love for whatever the thing that was not of God that was still in their heart. That's why I'm always saying, Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me. So when y'all hear me praying, and I'm praying Psalms 51, it's like, yes, I am going to read the verse where it says, I have sinned against thee, and sinned in my heart, blah, 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 this, that, and something. I don't want to read the verse talking about sin because they don't think I sinned. I'm like, forget that. The Bible says I'm going to read it. It's like, Lord, wash me against thee. The only have I sinned is what it said. That when, that thou will be justified when thou speakest. That thou will be clear when thou judgest. And so I'm going to pray all of that. Because I don't want it to be just because I know in my mind that I think 99% or whatever I feel, then God's like, no, you're not even close to 99%. He said, there are some things that I haven't even touched on. Why? Because you can't bear them. And I'm talking about myself. So we have to keep that in mind. That's why the Bible says think soberly about it. I'm always like, Lord, show me. Show me myself. Show me that thing. Prepare me for it. Lord, if I be otherwise minded, as the Bible says, he will reveal it unto you. God wants to reveal what's in your heart that he wants to take away. That your whole body can become full of light. That it won't come up and you'll lose your sweet words. Amen. Amen. If you turn me to Philippians 4, Philippians 4 and 4, going back to the New Testament tonight. I'm so thankful. I, I can't even tell it all. I, that's why I can talk forever. 
<laughs> like I got so much to be thankful for. And I'm, I'm thankful that I have not forgotten what the Lord has done for me. And that it still matters. It's not like a job where you get used to things or a relationship. You get used to things and you don't, you don't do the things you used to do. The fire is not like it used to be. You know all the things people say, you've been married 17 years, the fire is gone. No, it's not like that with God. Brand new mercies you see that can stir up the gift that's in you. And you're just as happy today as you were 17 years ago. So over in Philippians 4 and 4, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And that's why I'm glad about it. Just so happy. Because it says rejoice always. And you don't have to try, well, let me make sure I rejoice today. No, the Spirit will just cause you to rejoice. You'll be minding your own business. And then the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, will just come upon you. And you just have joy about whatever it is. You just have joy to be saved. You have, you have joy. It's Tuesday because you know you're coming to Bible study. And you know there's a blessing. And you're glad to be off work. And you're glad to have the mind to come to Bible study. So rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Let your moderation be known unto all men. So I went and looked up moderation. It says the avoidance of excess or extremes, especially in one's behavior. Avoidance of excess or extremes, especially in one's behavior. So how does that translate to what the Bible is saying? Let your behavior be known unto all men. Let what about your behavior be known unto all men? That the Lord is at hand. That the Lord is leading your life. That the Lord is directing your footsteps now. That the Lord is changing your heart. That the Lord is renewing you in the spirit of your mind. Let your life, your behavior show that you are being washed by the water of the word. That it is worth coming to Bible study. That it is worth saying no to what you used to love. That it is worth finally giving up and allowing the Spirit to change us. Let your moderation be known to all men. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God. Let it be known to all men. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And this careful in verse 6 is not the careful like we think about careful. This careful is don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. So it says be anxious for nothing. That means don't be worried about things. Don't be, be anxious. Oh, I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm frazzled. It said instead of doing that, realize you have a God and then do what? In everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Talking about putting on righteousness, holiness in his true righteousness. So instead of me being the old person, anxious, when I had that car accident, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was so anxious. When is this going to be fixed? What's this, that, and the other? This, that, I, I was just, I was a mess. I've had car accidents since then. Now that I'm saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, it's all right. They'll fix it or they won't. God will give me a whole new one even better because I take it to the Lord in prayer now and with supplication and with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you that you saved my life. My car might be total, but I thank you for saving my life. And whatever you're changing, whatever you do for me, Lord, work on me through this situation. What do you want me to learn in this situation, Lord? Why my car is busted and disgusted. And so you begin to do these things and then something will happen to you. It will say, the Bible says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Somebody say all. all. Which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When you do this, the peace of God that passes all understanding, the old me, the old man in 2005, would, could not understand the peace that I have now about cars. I could not fathom looking back and looking forward.
The old me is like, what do you mean you're not worried about it? And I got a nicer car now than I had back then. And I am not worried. And Brother Brooks has been right there. And he's seen me have to spend double digit thousands to get my car fixed. Not worried at all. Let them keep it for days. Wasn't following up. Wasn't anxious. Is it fixed yet? Do I need to come by and see it? Not worried. Because the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep my heart. That's what the Spirit was doing. He's keeping my heart from that car becoming my all in all again. That's what he does. He'll keep your heart from worldly music becoming your all in all again. You can walk in the store and hear it and it will not become your all in all again. You can see somebody else drinking and it will not become what you want to do anymore because the Spirit will keep your heart in what? In yourself? No, in Christ Jesus. And when he keeps it in Christ Jesus, by us being taught by Jesus, he begins to bring to us the things that Jesus has said. Jesus himself said that the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We've been reading scriptures in red. Jesus has said things unto you tonight. And so the Spirit will bring these things to you, and it will keep your heart. And when the kids were my all in all, the things that they say, good or bad, by the grace of God, the Spirit keeps my heart. And I don't get blown away like I used to, like down and out. When it was my all in all, she'll tell you. It used to hurt, hurt me bad. And they weren't even trying sometimes. But it was my expectations of the life that I wanted to have and how I wanted my kids to love me and treat me and things that would destroy me down and out. And when they say good things, I float off. Like, man, this is the best in the world. Forget about church, forget about God, just me and the girls. But the Spirit is keeping my heart. And he wants to do that for all of us. He said he'll keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. So what do we do with this heart? What do we do with this mind? How do we put on this, this righteousness and this true holiness? It says, finally, brethren, at the end of Bible study tonight, it says, finally, brethren, after hearing all these things, not just what the apostles have said, but also what Jesus has said directly to us as he's taught us tonight, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and virtue is in righteousness and true holiness, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, not praise between the two or three of us, because we used to praise sin, but praise in God, something that God accepts, that he's happy. If there be any praise, think on these things. The renewing of the spirit of our mind. Think on these things. It said earlier, so is a man Thinketh in his heart, so is he. If we begin to think on these things, and the Bible promises us that the Spirit will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, you begin to think on things that are true, the Word of God. God's opinion is always true. It's truer than our own opinion. You begin to think on things that are true, you will become true the light will begin to shine in your mind and in your heart. You begin to think on things that are honest. You will become honest. That's what Jesus said about how we think. You begin to think on things that are just. You will become just. It is as simple as that. You will become just. It's a promise. If you begin to think on things that are pure, you will become pure. The Bible tells us to him that is pure, all things are pure. You begin to see things purely. You'll be pure on the inside, and then you'll have pure motives. And no one will be able to ever say you misled them or mistreated them or manipulated them. Because you'll be pure, and you'll see things purely. It says that if, if you do this and you start thinking on things that are lovely, you will become lovely. And that's not a feminine thing. That's lovely in God. God will see you as lovely. He'll see you like the apple of his eye. He will love you so much. 
It says that if you do th if you think of things that are of a good report, you will earn a good report with God first and then with man. A good report on the job, a good report in the community, a good report in your family. You'll earn a good report. If there be any virtue, think on that. You'll become virtuous. And if you're a woman, oh, that's a beautiful thing. The Bible has scriptures talking about a virtuous woman. God loves a virtuous woman more than just about anything. There are so many. She's more precious than rubies. I mean, oh, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And the blessings of her household and all, all, oh, it is, oh, it's so much stuff about a virtuous woman. Think on that. You'll become that. And if there be any praise, you will become to the praise of his glory. That's what the Bible tells us. Everything you do, it'll be like praise unto God. He'll be so happy, even on the job. You're not going to the job praising, but you're on the job living holy. And it'll be to the praise of his glory. And then it says, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned. We have learned this tonight. Every time you hear it is learning again. So learning is not like learning in school, where in school, if we already went through a chapter, I do not want to read the chapter, that science book anymore. Especially if I learned it already. It's like, you wasted my time. I already know two plus two. How many times you got to tell me two plus two is four? But in God, it's different. Each time you hear the word of God, it's the Holy Spirit that can give you higher heights and deeper depths in your understanding. Each time you hear the word of God, what it's actually doing is tearing down some of those doors that are in us that's blocking the spirit from going in there and taking out those things out of our heart. So every time you say yes to the word, no matter if you heard it a million times, the spirit is like, Father, he or she said yes. Today's the day. Deliverance is nigh. And so when you do this, which you have both learned and received, if you say yes, that's receiving it. Receiving is not the same as hearing. You can hear things and not receive it. But if you receive this tonight, and you allow the Spirit to come in and change you, receive what you have heard and seen in me. Not just me. Me isn't anybody that's already done this, especially the people in the Bible. It says, do a simple command. Just do it. Just begin to think on these things. It won't cost money. When you leave out of here tonight, just think on these things. Get home. Think on these things. Maybe one of these words stuck out to you. Maybe it's virtue. Maybe it's something else. Just think on it. And God will see you thinking on it. And he'll send the Spirit in. And the Spirit will amplify your thoughts about that thing. And you'll find yourself thinking about that even the more. And then you'll find yourself walking in it, and then you'll become it. And what does it say in the end? When you do this, the God of peace shall be with you. I want to encourage you tonight. This is how you put on righteousness and true holiness. It's about thinking about it. Whatever you think, that's what you are. The greatest football player, he is the greatest football player because that's what he thinks. And he did everything he could to become the greatest. But it had to start with thinking it. If he never thought it, he wouldn't become it because no one can force any of us to do or become anything. If God can't force us because he chooses not to, then nobody else can force you. And that's why I encourage you tonight. Just make the choice to begin to think on these things and think on the word of God. And the more you do it, the more the spirit will wash you. The more he'll cleanse you. The more he'll sanctify you. The more he'll justify you. Because you won't be doing those things anymore. And no matter what anybody says about you, you'll be justified in God's sight. They're lying if they say, Pastor Harris is somewhere drinking. I don't care who says it. Because I'm not, I don't do that anymore. My mother could call you and say, yeah, you lying, Mom. Because I've been justified. And so he'll justify you. The Bible says, in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why I love that name. 
starting out tonight. But it doesn't stop there. It then tells us how we're going to be washed, how we're going to be sanctified, how we're going to be justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. The last part of that scripture says, by the Spirit of our God. It's the Holy Ghost. That's why we need him. He does the washing, the sanctifying, the justifying in the name of Jesus as we stand tonight. And he's drawing all of us. He doesn't just draw us, fill us, and leave. And God's no respect of persons. So every time I tell somebody they need to be filled with the Spirit because the Spirit tells me that, that's me also saying to myself, I need to stay filled with the Spirit and I need to grow in the Spirit. So I might not come to you and say, hey, I need more of the Spirit. The Spirit says that to me. Just like he tells us, hey, I need to be filled with the Spirit when he told me when I didn't have him. So I want to encourage you with that too. If you have not been filled with the Spirit yet, or if you have not received your refreshing, your refilling, God has that for everybody. He wants to fill and refill. He wants to save and deliver. He wants to keep us to that great day. Amen. Let's lift our hands. Father, in the name of Jesus.